Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Patients with a pre-existing left bundle branch block uh, are a challenge uh, when they present with chest pain. It's usually very difficult to diagnose an acute MI uh, based on their ECG. The uh, SCARBOSA criteria are often cited, uh, but I find that uh, they are often uh, used uh, incorrectly. Uh, today, we'll look at the original SCARBOSA criteria, as well as the modified SCARBOSA criteria, and go over how uh, they should be used. Okay, um, so here is a common scenario. Uh, we have an 80-year-old woman uh, with the usual cardiac risk factors uh, who is in town visiting family uh, for the holidays. She has been having intermittent chest pain for a couple of days and was brought uh, to the ED by her very concerned daughter on Christmas morning. Uh, the patient uh, had a PCI of the circumflex about three years ago. Um, her vitals were stable. Uh, she was very pleasant and, and in uh, no distress and uh, was dressed in a quite an absolutely fantastic uh, Christmas sweater uh, with uh, blinking lights. Uh, her uh, troponin was pending. So um, the ED sends you her ECG. Uh, they tell you that she's an 80-year-old lady with, from out of state uh, who presented with chest pain and a left bundle branch block. She has no prior ECGs in our system, uh, but her current ECG shows uh, discordant ST elevations uh, more than five millimeters uh, in the anterior leads. Uh, they then mention something about scarbosa and ask you uh, whether you want to call in the STEMI team for an emergency cardiac cath. Uh, you look at the ECG and the ED is right. Uh, the anterior ST elevations are clearly more than five millimeters. So what uh, should you do? Uh, should you call in your team on Christmas Day? So um, the original seminal paper by Elena Scarbosa and her colleagues was published uh, back in February of 1996 uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine. And in that paper, uh, there were three ECG criteria uh, that were described. Uh, first, ST elevation uh, one millimeter or more in the same direction or concordant uh, with the QRS complex. Second, uh, ST depression one millimeter or more in the anterior leads. And third, uh, which is the one that is the most frequently cited, is ST elevation five millimeter or more in the opposite direction or discordant uh, with the preceding QRS complex. Uh, you get five points for the first criterion, uh, three points for the second, and two points for the last and the most frequently cited criterion. And here's the first main point. You need a total of three points to be considered positive by Scarbosa. And the most commonly cited criterion, uh, five millimeters or more of discordant ST elevation is not sufficient. It only gets two points. And here's a second main point uh, that's usually overlooked. Uh, Scarbosa is often used to predict MI with coronary occlusion, in other words, a STEMI equivalent, but this is incorrect. In, her, in their original paper, Scarbosa was just looking to predict uh, elevated CKMB and not coronary occlusion. So a positive Scarbosa is only predictive of CKMB positive acute MI and not a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI. In other words, a positive scarbosa is not a STEMI equivalent. So um, how good are these criteria? Well, if we look at the likelihood ratios, if your score is three or more, in other words, scarbosa positive, the odds of your patient having a CKMB uh, positive acute MI is increased by ninefold, uh, which is pretty good. But if your score is less than three, in other words, scarbosa negative, the odds of your patient having a CKMB positive acute MI is decreased by 30% uh, to 70% of the pretest odds. Uh, this is usually not a sufficient difference uh, to be helpful for you to make a decision. Another way to look at this uh, is that if your scarbosa is positive, your patient very probably has CKMB positive acute MI. But if the scarbosa is negative, you really haven't ruled anything out. The specificity is high, uh, but the sensitivity is quite low, only 36%.
So in 2012, uh, Stephen Smith and his colleagues uh, published the modified Scarbosa criteria in the Annals of Emergency Medicine. Uh, here they looked uh, to address the issue of low sensitivity in the original Scarbosa paper and also developed criteria to predict occlusion MI, in other words, STEMI equivalent MI, rather than just enzyme uh, positive MI. So Smith and his colleagues came up with the following three criteria for coronary occlusion MI. First, uh, concordant ST elevation of one millimeter or more in any lead. In other words, the direction of the ST elevation in the same direction as the direction of the QRS. Second, concordant ST depression of one millimeter or more in any anterior lead. And third is excessive discordant ST elevation. In other words, if the size of the ST elevation is more than 25% or more of the size of the S wave, um, then it is considered excessive. Um, the first two criteria are similar to the original Scarbosa criteria. The third one is different. Uh, the other difference is that there is no point system assigned, meaning any of the criteria is considered to be positive. And unlike the original Scarbosa, we're talking about positive for coronary occlusion MI. So how good are the modified Scarbosa criteria? Well, if any of the three criteria are met, the odds of your patient having a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI is increased by ninefold. And if none of the criteria are met, the odds of your patient having a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI is decreased by 90%. Another way to look at this is that if the modified Scarbosa is positive, your patient probably has a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI. And if the modified Scarbosa is negative, your patient probably does not have a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI. The sensitivity and specificity are both 90% or more. All right, so what about our patient? Um, if we look at her ECG uh, using the original Scarbosa criteria, she only gets two points uh, for discordant ST elevation of five millimeter or more. So despite what the ED told you, she is actually negative uh, by the original Scarbosa criteria. But because of the low sensitivity, this only decreases her odds of a CKMB positive acute MI by 30% not really that helpful for you to make a decision for whether to call in your team on Christmas Day. Uh, what if we looked at the modified Scarbosa criteria? Well, here uh, she meets none of the criteria. Her discordant ST elevations are not 25% or more of the size of the preceding S wave. So since she is negative by the modified Scarbosa criteria, her odds of having a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI is decreased by 90%. So you decide to let the STEMI team uh, spend more time at home with their families on Christmas Day. Uh, you tell the ED to manage the patient medically for now and call a general cardiology consult. And as it turned out, uh, the patient eventually ruled out for MI by enzymes and was discharged for outpatient follow-up uh, with her primary cardiologist. Okay, so here is another example. Uh, here's another patient uh, who presented with chest pain and a left bundle branch block. Um, let's look at the original Scarbosa criteria. Uh, none of the criteria are met, actually. Uh, there is no concordant ST elevation anywhere. There is no anterior ST depression of one millimeter or more. There is discordant ST elevation in the anterior leads, but it does not quite hit uh, five millimeters. So this ECG is negative uh, by the original Scarbosa criteria. Again, uh, this decreases the odds of CKMB positive AQMI by 30% which is usually not that helpful for your cath lab uh, decision making. Now, um, if we look at this using the modified Scarbosa criteria, we see that the patient in fact has pretty sizable discordant ST elevation in V2 and V3 compared to the S wave. In V2, the height of the ST elevation is 38% the size of the S wave. And in V3, the height of the ST elevation is 32% the size of the S wave. This means that this patient is positive by the modified Scarbosa criteria. And this allows you to conclude that his odds of having a STEMI equivalent occlusion MI is ninefold higher. This patient, in fact, ended up going to the cath lab emergently and had a 100% occlusion of the proximal LED. All right, um, take home messages. Uh, the first thing to remember is that the most often cited Scarbosa criteria 
which is a discordant uh, ST elevation of five millimeters or more, is not sufficient uh, for a positive scarbosa. It only gets two of the three points that you need. The second is that the original scarbosa is only used to predict CKMB positive MIs, not STEMI equivalent occlusion MIs. And even then, it is specific and not particularly sensitive. In other words, a positive scarbosa means that the odds of having positive cardiac enzymes are high, but a negative scarbosa is usually inconclusive and not very helpful. I find that the more recent Smith modified scarbosa criteria to be much more helpful. First, it is designed to predict STEMI equivalent occlusion MI, and it is sensitive and specific. A positive modified scarbosa means that the odds of having an, occlu an occlusion MI are high. And conversely, a negative modified scarbosa means that the odds of having an occlusion MI are low. Meaning any of the three criteria is sufficient. Um, concordant ST elevation of one millimeter or more, concordant ST depression of one millimeter or more in the anterior leads, or a discordant ST elevation of 25% or more of the depth of the preceding S wave. Thank you for watching.